Okay, cool. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning, and good morning, Facebook land as well. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks very much for coming over, guys. Um, my name's Chris Calcott. I'm the product specialist for Focusrite Innovation. And um, this year we've had quite a big year for, for Novation. We've had some, some big news, some big products released. Um, we have our wonderful Novation Peak, and we'll take a look at that a bit later on this afternoon. And this session, we're going to take a look at the uh, Circuit Mono Station. And the Circuit Mono Station is a wonderful little analog groove box, basically. Um, it's uh, a synthesizer, and it's based around the core elements of the base station, too. So, um, basically, we've taken the oscillators and the filters from the base station 2, which was our analog synth form about four years ago. And rather than put this all together with a keyboard, you know, with an, uh, just a straightforward standard keyboard, we've taken really the power and the, and the, and the love that we've had for the, for the Novation circuit, the sequencer, Groovebox, and we've put the two units together to create the circuit mono station. So the circuit mono station is basically elements of the base station too, with some differences, with some nice differences, but also with the sequencer that you find on the circuit. Um, and obviously a lot of people these days, myself included actually, are making music using sequencer boxes, as opposed to sitting at the computer and maybe you know using the mouse to create music. Now we're kind of getting our hands dirty using these products. And the mono station is really the next in the, in the family, in the, the circuit family. It's quite different from circuit in many ways. You know, a lot of people originally expected uh, the mono station to be a development from where the circuit began. But actually, this is a different type of instrument. And actually, it, it gives us a different approach to, uh, uh, to using that sequencer. So um, I should say as well to everybody in, um, in Facebook land um, watching um, out, out there, if you do have any questions as well, and the same goes for you guys here, of course, if you've got any questions at any point throughout the uh, the presentation, please uh, please just ask. And um, il faut que je dise aussi que je vais faire la petite présentation en anglais. Uh, je sais que je suis à, à le, 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 le région de, de Suisse qui parle en français, mais uh, pour les pour tout pour tout le monde, je crois qu'il va être un petit peu mieux pour uh, pour parler en anglais pour la petite présentation. Oh. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, right, so mono station. I mean, if, you, if we look at the, the top panel here, if we look at the, the actual synthesizer side, it looks really quite basic, you know. Um, here is our mixer. This is the place where we can blend the sounds together. Our controls for the oscillators here. The filter here as well. The distortion, which is a very nice thing over here, the distortion. And then on the top, we have our control. So we have LFO, low frequency oscillator. We have an envelope here as well. But also we have this section, which is the modulation matrix. And we're going to look at the modulation matrix in a little bit of depth in a moment. But firstly, let's just hear how it sounds. So when we first turn mono station on, this is our, if you like, screen. I mean, it's not a screen, it's a grid, <laughs> but you think of it like a, a feedback screen. And the top two rows here are basically a keyboard. So I can play, or should be able to play. Hang on, let's just get the uh, patches up. Let's go here. There we go. So this is a keyboard, but this at the moment is set to a specific scale. Um, and the scales page is just here. So if I hit the scales button, now I'm given a number of different options. I'm given 16 different scales to choose from. And the great thing about this is it means you're always going to play in key. You won't lose the key. I mean, if you're not a keyboard player or, you know, particularly familiar with the harmonic sort of sort of content of the, of, the, of the chromatic scale and that sort of thing, you do have access to all the correct notes. Um, so this is quite useful. Uh, but also in the scales page, of course, we have the final option, number 16, which is my particular favorite because now I have all of the notes there. So I have all the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. If I want to expand this keyboard as well, I can press shift and note and now I can give myself two octaves. And of course, if I'm on one of the predetermined scales as well, now I can press shift and expand, and now I have four octaves. So it's quite a versatile system of being able to control the synthesizer. So 
as I say, this is the, the page that we normally arrive at when we turn circuit on. And if I hit play here, let's just make sure we're clear on this circuit. I don't want any unusual sounds, but let's just hit play here. Yeah, that's cool. Now you can see I have these little white patches here, these little white steps. And the white steps here represent where I am in a pattern. And on the circuit family, we, we work in patterns. These are like the measures or the bars of music that you have. Each one is worth 16 steps by default. And so by following this little sequence here, hey, you can see where we are in the bar. Now I have a couple of options. I can hit record and record in. So we just capture that straight away, no problem. Or I can hit the clear button just to get rid of these notes. If I would prefer to kind of place the notes myself into the measure, uh, then I can hold a position. So I'll just press this step and then say, okay, I want this note here. Okay, on this step, I want this note. On this step, I want this note. And here, and so on, forth, and so on, and so forth. So we can place notes in this way as well. So, you know, we're not just limited to have to play in, we can actually step input very easily as well. Now, let's go back to the chromatic scale. So let's have a listen to the synth engine. We've looked how we can use the, uh, um, the sequence very, very basically there. But if I hit press, start pressing the notes, if I want to change the patch, I can hit the patch button here. Now, one of the things on the original circuit is that you aren't able to store patches directly or create patches directly in here. You need a, the software editor to go in and access the synthesizer engine. Of course, on the mono station, we have the synthesizer engine in front of us. So we have every aspect of that directly in front of us. This means that we can store patches directly into Circuit Mono Station. And so, you know, we can, we have uh, on the patches page, we have 32 here. And if I press the octave button, we have another 32. So we have 64 spaces for your, uh, for your, uh, for your patches that you create. So, you know, I can choose a patch here. And I should say as well that we will have on here, we will have um, a, a patch preview feature as well. So when I press the pad, I will be able to audition that sound and just check that's the right sound that I want. Um, so that's, gonna, that's coming along. Um, but um, at the moment, I can just hit the, uh, the oscillator button. And it's quite a nice sound. Actually, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to go down a couple of octaves. Nice kind of rubber sort of bassy sound. Uh, maybe I'll just put some steps in again. So... Uh, so when I hit play, there we go. Nice little sequence there. We'll stick with that one for now, I think. Okay. Now you may notice that when I've hit play here on the mono station, the circuit is also playing as well. Um, that's because I've got these synced together using a MIDI connection. Well, I say a MIDI connection. In actual fact, it's just one of these things here. <laughs> if you can see, just a little mini jack stereo. Uh, and the great thing is, of course, that well, we're using breakout cables for the circuit to jump to a five pin uh, MIDI connection. Um, but uh, the circuits will talk to each other just using mini jack as well. So you don't actually need a MIDI cable to be able to do that. Just a straightforward headphone cable or something like that will allow you to sync them together. And as I say, when I hit play here, I'm also triggering the circuit. So they're perfectly in sync, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's have a listen to uh, actually, you see what? Let's stop everything at the moment, and I'm going to now just press Shift and Patches, and this initializes the sound. Th when you initialize the sound, basically you take away all of the parameters, and you just take it back to a single oscillator with a sawtooth. And there it is. That's the sawtooth oscillator. Now, on the oscillator section here, you can see I've got four different wave shapes. It's a pure analog synthesizer, so we have the four analog wave shapes. And I've got the sawtooth here. I have a square. I have sine, and we have a triangle. So we have all of the four, you know, um, analog wave shapes. Um, on the square wave as well, we also have, if I hit, hit and hold the notes, press shift as well, I can use this fine pitch control to give me my pulse width control as well. So I've got, you know, those, they're all of that sort of shape. I can also modulate this using the modulation matrix, but again, we'll look at that in a moment. So here we've got, pitch control, and we have a fine pitch control, and this just allows me to obviously get everything in tune and get the right sound. Of course, as I've mentioned, if I hit shift, that becomes a pulse width control as well. 
Now, of course, circuit mono station is based around two oscillators, so this is just a single oscillator, oscillator one. If I go to my mixer here and bring up oscillator two, you can hear how the second oscillator is coming in, but at the moment that's in unison. And it would be nice to maybe thicken out that sound, maybe just detune them a little bit and thicken out that sound. So if I want to start to control the oscillator two, I just simply press oscillator two here, and now I have the controls. Now you'll notice that when I play the keyboard now on oscillator two, it's not going to trigger the notes. And that might sort of seem a bit strange. Why would you have a keyboard but you can't trigger the notes? The circuit mono station is a monophonic synthesizer. It plays, you know, through a single filter and a single envelope. And usually, you know, unless you uh, start to play around on the uh, sequencer, you will just the oscillators will follow each other. They'll be connected. But because we have two sequences on here, we can disconnect the two oscillators. There's still only one filter and one amplifier, but the oscillators can be separated and treated separately. And this is why we call this a paraphonic synthesizer. So it's a mono synth in terms of we have, you know, a single filter, single amplifier, but paraphonic because we have two oscillators and we can treat those separately and, and, and send those to different notes. Um, and in a paraphonic synthesizer, normally oscillator one is the oscillator that is in charge of opening the amplifier, okay? On a synthesizer like this, it's kind of strange to think this way, but the oscillators are always running. The oscillators are always making a sound, okay? And the only time we ever hear the sound is when we open the amplifier. So you press a key and the amplifier opens, the, the oscillators flow through, and then you take your finger off the key, the amplifier closes, we don't hear the sound. And the oscillator that is in charge of the amplifier at this point is oscillator one. So if I go to oscillator two, oscillator two cannot open the amplifier. This is how you would sort of understand paraphonic behavior. But we have a nice switch here. If I press shift and the scales button, it's a it's, we call this the paraphonic switch. The, the synthesizer is always paraphonic, of course, but when you press this button, it means that oscillator two can also open the amplifier. This is quite nice because now, I can now play the synthesizer from the second oscillator page as well. And this means now I can obviously use the controls here to, to get the sound that I'm looking for. So I've tuned now oscillator two to a fifth, well just slightly up, to get that nice sort of analog mono sound. So if I hit play again, You'll see there's no sequence data here on oscillator two, but if I go to oscillator one, of course, that was the sequence that we created. And that means now that we can, um, yeah, let's just explore a little bit more. On the mixer here, you'll see we've got a sub oscillator. This is going to um, follow oscillator one. Uh, it might be a little bit li difficult to hear, if, especially if you're, if you're watching on Facebook and listening on, your, uh, on the little speakers on your, <laughs> on your computer. Um, the sub there is, is actually putting out a triangle waveform, um, and of course it's an oct well, it's an octave below oscillator one, and so this just gives you know on a big system when you've got the volume up, you'll get a lot of a bottom end with that as well. Um, I really enjoy using the sub just as a single oscillator sound normally. Um, okay, next to that we've also got noise, so we have a noise generator as well. We've got the audio in. I'm going to come onto that into a bit of detail later on, but we've got an audio input here, and on the back of the circuit mono station, we have an audio in. And I've also got a ring uh, modulation. This is an interaction between oscillators one and two. And is, you know, basically a, a, another great, great type of sound. Now, if I start to really detune oscillator two, you'll hear this really start to kind of get a bit crazy. It's kind of as ring modulators do. But that's a really nice thing to have on there as well, and especially when we start to disconnect the oscillators, we can get some very, very interesting features from that. So, okay, so there's the mixer, and we'll move into the filter section now. So the filter is, as I said earlier, it's the Base Station 2 filter. It's an OTA filter, and it's available on 24 dB per octave or 12 dB per octave. So 
on 24 dB per octave. That's quite a bit more extreme in terms of the way it rolls off the frequencies. We put it onto 12 dB. It's a little bit more gentle on the slope there. So that's, again, you know, we've got a nice choice of, of, of flavour, if you like, of the, of the filter. We've also got a band pass. Band pass filter and a high pass. So it's what we call a state variable filter. And we have a choice of using the button here to switch between low pass, band pass and high pass positions. It's resonant as well, and of course, if I just bring down all of the volumes in the mixer here, now let's just bring the <laughs> frequency down, but if I bring the resonance right up, we're getting a, a, a true sine wave generated by the self-oscillating filter there as well. So we can actually use that if you wanted as a pitched oscillator. It's quite nice with the distortion after it. So that's obviously something that we can do as well. Okay, now let's uh, take the resonance off, bring up the oscillator. Now, here's oscillator 2. Ah, <laughs> out of tune from my messing around. Now, before I just show you what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to quickly record in another part onto oscillator 2. I'm going to take the paraphonic switch off so we can hear what goes on, and then... Now you can hear I've kind of recorded in some extra notes, but they're not quite an extra sequence. It's not quite an additional line of music. And again, that's because it's a paraphonic synthesizer. So the oscillator one is opening the amplifier. And when the oscillator one is open the amplifier, that's when we hear oscillators two different notes. So if I, for example, just bring up the, let's see, uh, amplifier, if I bring up the release, Now we can hear the second oscillator, and you know it's being, we can hear it because we have a long release time on the sound. But if I want to treat the second oscillator as a separate line, I can press Shift and the Scales button to switch on that paraphonic switch. So what's going on now is that oscillator one and oscillator two are triggering the amplifier. So maybe put an extra few notes on here so we can hear. So we can do that. If I switch that off again, we get a different type of sound. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this switch here, and this is the bypass switch. If I switch over here, oscillator 2 is now not coming through the filter. So the filter is covering oscillator 1 but oscillator 2 is bypassing the filter completely let's change the shape so you can hear so that can be quite useful to separate the oscillators even further to get some uh, interesting uh, uh, sounds from there I can also bypass the noise so if I bring in the noise so if I roll the filter right off you can hear the, the noise is still coming through non-filtered. If I put it through the filter, you can hear the filter attacking, oh, the controlling the noise, uh, the noise there. Now I mentioned before about the ring modulator. When we separate the two oscillators and have those interacting differently, we can get some very interesting sounds. Maybe let's go, let's put this other. So you can hear the notes are different, but also the timbre, the sound of the synthesizer is quite different when we're using the ring modulator because we're separating the oscillators, they're interacting quite differently now, and we can get some quite interesting sounds from that as well. Okay, I should mention we've got the overdraft, overdrive here. I nearly said overdraft then, that's a, that's a more of a banking term, but here is uh, overdrive, which is a gain control for the oscillators going into the filter. If I take this down, it's quite a subtle uh, change here, but you can just nice and clean and then we just give it a bit more control, a bit more gain there. Then after all of this we've got our distortion. So you can hear how the distortion really can quite, uh, uh, quite 
uh, yeah, have a quite a profound effect to the sound there. Okay, so that's basically the synthesizer aspect to the mono station. And you might think, well, actually, that's really basic. You know, we've got two oscillators. Okay, there's the mixer. Uh, we've got the filter as well. The filter does sound lovely, and the distortion there as well sounds really nice after it, but it's really quite a basic synth. But of course, we're on the, uh, the circuit format, and we have our circuit sequencer. So if I hit record, I can do some really quite nice things now, which really kind of open up the possibilities of what we're doing with the, uh, with the synthesizer. So let's bring in the oscillator here, in the sub as well. If I hit record, make some changes to the sound with my uh, automation. So what I did there was just quickly hit record, move the filter, and then move the oscillator to volume. You can hear now we've added a bit of life to that sound. We've added a bit of movement there. I can overwrite that if I want. So we can use automation on the circuit to really bring in, well, basically as much modulation into the sound as we want. Now, of course, above the synth engine part, we have our control uh, section as well. And here we have an LFO section with a single rate control. We have different wave shapes for the LFO as well. Uh, we can sync the LFO to keep it in time with the, um, uh, with the circuit sequencer as well. After that, we have a single envelope. And the envelope is attack, decay, sustain, release, an ADSR envelope uh, on sliders as well. I always really enjoy using envelopes on sliders. They seem to make quite a lot of sense when you, you know, you're creating the shape there of the envelope. So single LFO, single L L um, envelope, again, quite a basic layout. But on here, we have the modulation matrix. And this is a really powerful aspect of the mono station because this allows me to choose my different sources, so envelope, LFO, sequence, or the velocity, the, uh, the attack or how hard I hit the keys or the pads, I can use these to control different parts of the synthesizer. So let's, I'll tell you what, let's initialize the patch. In fact, I'm going to start from a fresh patch again, and I'll just make a, uh, just play some notes. Okay, fresh patch. Okay. Okay, so let's say I'm going to take the envelope here and I want to apply this to the pitch of oscillator 1. So I choose envelope, I choose pitch, and now when I uh, add an amount, so in the modulation matrix I'm saying, okay, take this envelope, control this parameter here, okay? And we can do this with various amounts of depth. So here, that's full. And again, if I shape the sound, if we just, like so. You can see that if I want a bit of attack. Okay, so I've got this control here. And this is the depth. If I want a bit less of that type of effect, I can just drop the depth down. If I go completely the other way, so anti-clockwise, I can make it a negative control. And then positive. And of course, that can be automated as well. So maybe if I duplicate this note here, actually, no, let's just get rid of that note and just put those notes in. OK. And maybe if I hit record, press the velocity button, on this step, I want it to come all the way down from the, the top, uh, the, 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 big, the biggest depth setting. Here, I'm going to go, so I'll scoop up, so I'm going negative into this. This one, let's go scoop down and scoop up. So now I've created automation on each of those steps, changing the depth amount of the modulation matrix on each step. So. I think. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, try again. Okay. <laughs> We're doing that now. You can. I mean, it's not the greatest musical output, but you get the idea that we can actually automate the depth here, which is a very strong part. I could also do the same for the LFO. So let's say I'm going to bring the filter down. Actually, let's clear these notes. In fact, let's go for a fresh session again, just to make sure 
and then uh, paste some notes in. Okay, and now I have LFO, so I'm going to now take the LFO and control the filter. So, choose LFO here, choose filter here, and now... So I'm going to get more depth on that, I think. Yeah, get up full. Okay, maybe a sawtooth as well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of sawtooth LFOs on filters. So, the next thing is to, to do some automation again. So, on the velocity page, with the record button on, I can say, okay, this step, I want the LFO to be at this speed. On this step, I want it to be at this speed. This one, this speed, and this one, like so. Okay, so now when I hit play, so now I'm able to change the LFO speed per step. And of course I can do this on any step, so maybe... So we can get some kind of crazy sort of rhythmic stuff going on there with this as well. We need a second oscillator. Okay, again, perhaps not the most musical, but the, the thing is, you get the idea of how you can use this. So the modulation matrix is a really powerful way of taking all the modulation that we have here and applying it to different aspects of the synthesizer. Um, other destinations are the distortion, the amplifier. So I can apply LFO to the amplifier. And if I go into audio rates with that, we get amplitude modulation, which is a great form of synthesis as well. We have a sequencer here. And we've seen oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 sequencer, but if I go to the mod sequencer, I now have the ability to actually place specific steps onto the modulation uh, sequencer page. So let's go like this. And I'm just randomly doing stuff. Now my sequence can be used to control different aspects. So uh, let's take off the automation for the uh, LFO. <laughs> And if we go back to LFO, I want to take that off the filter. So I'm just holding clear. And turning it to the left will remove the automation that I've created. It turning to the right will uh, zero or centralize that parameter as well. So there we go. So you can see my mod sequence is playing here, but it's not going anywhere at the moment. So let's say I'm going to take the mod... Let's listen to the square wave. I'm going to take the mod sequence and control the pulse width modulation from the sequence. So, so you can hear now how the mod sequence is controlling the pulse width of that square wave. So that's quite a nice little thing as well. Now at the minute you can hear that's quite um, that's quite steppy. You know, we're jumping to different values. But if I want to smooth this, if I press shift I have an option here to smooth the uh, mod sequence. So you can use that to actually just smooth that out. Now, an important thing to mention is the AUX CV here as well. And that is one of the destinations in the modulation matrix. Now, it's going to be very difficult to do this because uh, the cameras are set up. But on the back here, with a whole load of uh, output um, connections, you can just see on the screen, on the TV screen that we've got, you can see the different sort of sockets here. Now, I'm not going to pick this up because the cameras may go a bit wobbly. But on here we have MIDI in, out and through, so it's a great way of connecting in your MIDI chain because we have MIDI through on this device, which is a, uh, quite an important aspect of, you know, of the hardware setups that we've got today. Uh, there we go, <laughs> gentlemen. Maybe if I could pick that up just to show the guys as well. Um, let's see, is that being shown, Dominic? Can we see that? Yeah. Cool, so we've got MIDI in, out and through, and also clock input and output. So we can use MonoStation to clock external or, uh, analog devices, modulars and all this sort of thing, or we can take a clock signal from a modular and feed MonoStation with that so that it will sync directly to that sort of thing too. And then we've got CV gate, so we can sequence and note sequence and duration sequence with the, uh, uh, with the CV and gate outputs, again into modular or anything that's working with CV. And then finally, AUX CV. So this is a second CV output. 
And once again, as I've said, I can send anything here from the modula ma modulation matrix to the aux CV destination. And so, for example, if I wanted to send this sequence that we've created out of the aux CV, simply go to sequence here, choose aux CV, and send that amount out. So this is a really powerful controller for CV-based uh, instruments as well. <laughs> thanks very much. Thanks for that. Um, alongside the sequencer, of course, I could send out my envelope. So I have, you know, maybe I've now got an extra envelope that I can apply into my modular, you know, if I want to, or an extra LFO that I can send to my modular. But more than that, this is automatable. So I have an automatable LFO and an automatable envelope that I can also use with my modular. So it's a very powerful thing. Recently, I've been uh, making a bit of music myself, and I've been lucky enough to borrow from work, from Novation, the 808 that we have, uh, the TR-808, the original uh, drum machine. And I've been clocking my whole rig from an 808, which I've never been able to do before, by simply just setting up a track and sending out a clock signal, firing that into the mono station, and then, of course, the MIDI is being picked up, and then we're sending the MIDI on down the MIDI chain. So that's actually really neat as well. And it's quite interesting when you use something like that, a drum machine like that, you start to get this kind of strange kind of inherent groove that is being produced by the clock of that old drum machine. And it's very, very nice indeed. So, okay, so we've looked at sort of the, uh, the synthesizer. Let's just take a quick look now at, this, at, the, um, at the sequencer and see how, uh, you know, how that's developed as well. Now, Circuit has been um, a, a particularly uh, popular product for us at Novation. Um, Circuit has been a complete groove box. You know, we've got four sample tracks. We've got two mini Nova synth, synth engines inside here. And a very powerful, but actually ultimately very easy to use sequencer. That's the thing about Circuit is that the, the sequencer itself is an incredibly easy, uh, easy thing to work with. And it's exactly the same sequencer that we have here on the mono station as well. So we have our note view. So on our note on our oscillator page, we have our note view. We have a velocity view as well. I can control the sounds via velocity. And again, I can assign velocity in my mod matrix to wherever I want that to go. So another controller message that we have. I have gate as well. So I can extend the length of the notes easily by using the gate value. So normally we have a, a 16th position or 16th gate duration. But I can extend that, and I've just extended this now to be three, so we should have a... If I just change that to a sixteenth again, you can see. You know, so we can control the length of the notes very easily as well. Um, so that's the gate. We've also added a new page. Ooh, microphone's going for a walk there. We've added a new page to uh, the circuit, well, the sequencer that we have on Mono Station, and this is the pattern settings page. Now, on circuit, actually, before we explain the pattern settings page, let's just understand a bit about patterns. On the circuit, we have eight patterns per sort of channel, if you like. So eight for synth one, eight for synth two, eight for drum one and two, which are combined, and eight for drum three and four. On the mono station, we've got 16 available to us for oscillator one. And this actually really, you know, this opens up the possibility for long musical phrases. So we can have 16 measures there. We have eight available for oscillator two. And we have eight available for the mod sequence as well. So we can extend the oscillator two and modulation sequence uh, uh, patterns as well. And to extend them, you just simply press and hold the first one, press and hold the last one. That's now going to chain and move through each of those patterns. Same on this 16 here. If I press here and hold here, that's going to chain 16 patterns together for me, which is great. So this means we can extend the amount of content and the amount of music that we have in there. Now, if I go to my pattern settings page, now um, if I look on the top two rows here, I have a yellow uh, row, and this is what we call our clock division. This is basically the speed of how the sequencer will run. So let me very quickly put together a quick beat here on circuit. Let's just, yeah, that'll do. And then drum two, that'll do. Hi-hat, let's, yeah. Okay. Let's just get that. Okay. So. Okay, so let's clear this pattern because <laughs> it wasn't the greatest piece of music 
as all of the others haven't been as well. And what I'll do is I'm going to now go to note here and let's just go to my scales, bring that off and I'm just going to kind of uh, put some notes on here and then Okay, so we've now got a little sequence running. So, okay, let's clear the... Let's get a sound going. Ooh, we don't want that one. There we go, it's getting a bit better. Okay, so on the pattern settings page, um, here we can choose the direction of which way the, uh, the sequencer is going. So here we're running forward, of course. So if we go this way, we can take the sequencer backwards. So we've got variation with the sequence. This one is like a ping pong. So we've taken one pattern here now, and it's actually twice as long, because, of course, it's one bar going forward, one bar going backwards. This one's interesting because this turns it random. So we can keep that nice and random as well. well let's go back to forward. Which is great. And now the top row, the yellow row, this is my clock division as I've said. So this is, uh, at this position everything is just as you would expect. 16th notes or a 16th uh, position in the bar. But maybe I want triplets. So if I go here, now, okay, sounds a bit unusual because it's out of time. <laughs> it's going too fast, but let's let's go to this one. This is slower triplets. So we can start to introduce this kind of feature into the uh, into the into the sound as well. If I want to go really slow, this is great because now uh, on the pattern settings page now, one measure is becoming four bars. So again, one pattern here, one measure, one pattern, is now actually worth four bars of normal time. Which means that on the patterns, if I chain this together, that's four bars, and we have 16 four bars in length, potentially, that's 64 bars, which is um, which is a huge amount of sequencing power um, from, from the circuit. So. That's a really nice new feature that we have on the mono station. That's currently not available on the circuit. Um, so this is a you know a development that we that we've made specifically for mono station. In fact, um, uh, one thing I should mention is that on the circuit here we've been I think pretty pretty kind over the past sort of two years or so by developing a lot of uh, uh, upgrades and firmware updates for the circuit. We've taken what was originally released here and really push that forward with some incredible updates. And one thing I should say is that we've not finished with the updates on this thing as well. There is more to come, so uh, watch this space. There's uh, still some, uh, some very, very neat things on the horizon for the circuit. Um, but one thing we, we found is that when we released this, of course, you know, processor, and memory, and this box was very, very... Uh, was a premium, you know, we didn't have too much space left in here. So now we're feverishly trying to make space inside and refine code and make space so we can add extra features to it. But it's important to say that on the mono station, one of the things is that we've learned with the circuit is that, you know, the updates have been a really big feature almost of what circuit has become. And so with the mono station, we have left space. So we have got extra memory in there. We have got extra processing space in there to be able to add features uh, further down the line. So, yeah, so that will, you know, that will be happening. Okay, um, a couple of other things I should very quickly mention. I sh yeah, let's just clear... S ooh, ah, yes, I forgot about that. So, I have a start and end point now on this page. So, so this is playing all 16 steps, but maybe I only want 8 steps. So I can just shorten it to whichever length I want. Maybe I just want 5 to get a weird kind of time, or 7. Yeah, so we can reverse now, and what will happen is it will only reverse these steps, of course, so... And we can go forward and back, of course, and it's just going to go forward and back on these steps. 
So we've got a lot of scope for really pushing what you can do on these individual sequences. I also, if I press the shift button, I can create a start point. So we're not just we don't just have to start at beat one or sixteen or position one all the way to sixteen. We can go forward and backwards with these as well. So let's bring that back to one and down here. Okay. Uh, now glide. Glide is important. Let's uh, on oscillator two. Let me bring oscillator two up. Oh no, there's no sequence on there. So. Okay, let me copy. I've never done this before, so it's good. <laughs> this will be interesting. Maybe I shouldn't do this for a live stream, but let's see what happens. If I press shift and clear, duplicate is now on a shift and clear function, which might seem a bit scary at first. You know, maybe you want to duplicate something, but you hit clear by accident. Actually, like all of this sort of thing, the motor memory is really quick to learn. And, you know, I'm actually finding myself doing that on the circuit a lot more now <laughs> than, 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 well, I don't think I've ever cleared anything by mistake. So let's try it anyway, but duplicate this pattern to this pattern. So now, yeah, so I've copied across from oscillator 1 to oscillator 2. That's good, because what I wanted to do was to bring oscillator 2 up a couple of octaves. So, okay, so it's the same sequence, of course, but it's just up a couple of octaves. Now I'm going to remove a few notes. Oh, it's copied the pattern settings as well. See that? I didn't realise it would do that, but that's nice. Okay, cool. Now, the point is, if I go to oscillator 1 now, and I press shift and gate, I enter the glide mode. Now I have per step glide, or an overall glide. So, if I just put it on, let's take oscillator 2 off for the minute. Okay, so you've got your portamento there. This is different amounts of portamento, so I could just have a very light portamento. Okay. When we want a heavier portamento, this is just going to go really woozy. Yeah, ooh, yeah, a bit like me this morning. <laughs> but let's go back. Okay, now that's an overall glide value. But if I wanted to, instead, I could turn glide off here and just say, okay, this note, I want a glide value of this on it. This note, I want a glide value of this. We'll go for a heavy glide. Here, we'll just go for a little one. Maybe here, we'll just turn it off. And here, we'll just have it on and off again. So now... So we've now got an individual glide per step, which is really powerful. Okay, so let's bring in the second oscillator. So I'll go to the oscillator 2 page, and this time I'm going to go for a different set of glide values. So we've now got oscillator 2 going even more drunk, independently from oscillator 1. Now, I mentioned before about the interaction between the oscillators for the ring modulator. Okay, that's a bit crazy now, but you can hear how that's really quite an interesting sound. Sub as well. Yeah, so you can use it all very, it gets very interesting stuff. Anyway, if you want to clear the glide, so let's just turn it off on all the steps. So now it's very straight on oscillator 2, sounds a bit boring now compared, but okay. Okay, so that's another great feature there, the uh, the glide. Now, um, uh, last thing I'll mention, or well, not last thing, there's a few other things, but <laughs> one thing I'll mention here is we've got a thing called mutate. So let's just bring our slate 2 down, go to the note view. <laughs> I'll just turn off the uh, individual note glide. Yeah, that'll do. The point was, on the note page here, if I press shift and pattern settings, it will mutate the notes. So this will randomize the position of the notes. The notes are there, they're in the right key, we're playing the right notes for the thing that we're working on. But if I press shift and mutate, I can get a new, a new sequence.
And sometimes the happy accidents can really come from that as well. But it gives me another way of improvisation, uh, improvising with the uh, with the secrets that we've got. Okay. Now a couple of other things, final things on the synth. We've got oscillator sync here. If I turn oscillator sync on, you can hear now how the sound is changing because we've got the oscillators synced together. This means that oscillator one is the master oscillator. When oscillator one finishes its cycle, oscillator two will restart, regardless of where it is in its waveform cycle. And this means that if I get to oscillator two, so I can get this sort of sound as well. And of course I can record. If I take sync off, you'll hear it's just going to sound like a drunk oscillator again. <laughs> There's oscillator one. Oscillator two is the sync output there. So that's nice as well. Uh, let's take sync off. Now, last thing to mention on the synth as well is that we have key tracking. Key tracking is the further up a scale or further up um, a keyboard I go, the filter will open up. It's a more natural way of getting the synth to sound. And if I press shift and key tracking, key tracking there is on full. So as I move up the notes, the filter opens up to give me a bit of musical control. If I turn that off, the filter is now fixed. So I could play the highest note, but it will still come on this filter value instead of opening automatically. If you hear now, you can just hear that on the higher notes, the filter's opening a little bit. If we turn that off, the filter's just fixed in its position. Okay, so that's the mono station. That's the synth. And the sequencer, and the combination of those is a really powerful device, you know. Of course, if I wanted to play this in the traditional way, I can easily plug in a MIDI keyboard into here and just play it as if it was, you know, a normal synthesizer. Um, you know, you can do that. But, of course, the idea with Monostation is to use and harness and enjoy the power that we have with the sequencer. Now, there's one thing I'm going to finish with, and I've nearly talked for an hour, and you guys have been incredibly patient. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to start a fresh session again, and I'm going to show you this, which is my favourite part of the mono station, I think. Um, there was a video, I noticed my colleague over in, in the States, Enrique, made a video last night demonstrating this, and it's such a cool little trick. Mono station, you think, is a synth, and it is a synth, of course, that's his kind of his raison d'etre. Oh, I did speak a bit of French in my presentation, there we go. But it's, yeah, that's his reason for being here. Uh, but also, we've got this audio input on the back. Now, the audio input means that I can pass a signal into here and pass it through the filter and through the distortion. You find this on a lot of mono synths, you know, you can pass audio through, maybe treat it as like, maybe, oh, sorry cameras, maybe we could add an extra oscillator in here and have a third oscillator for our sequence. Great. But one thing I love to do is, I've made a beat here, it's not an amazing beat. Okay, I'm going to turn, right, I'm going to uh, reset everything to initialized patch. Turn everything down here on my sequencer, apart from the audio input. Now, just to explain here, on my mixer, I've got a little Yamaha mixer over here. And my circuit is going in down this channel. And I have access to, where is it? It is called FX Send. There it is. And the FX Send is an auxiliary send on a mixer. That means I can take the dry signal, but also take the dry signal halfway down and send that to somewhere else. And I'm sending that back into the audio input here on the mono station. So you can see the value is up here, the volume is up, but we can't hear anything. And that's because the amplifier is closed. There's no sequence or data in here to open the amplifier and let that audio pass through. So if I press a... Now straight away you can hear there's a little filtering going on on that sound. But let's, let's hear it a little bit more pronounced by adding some distortion. So what was very basic beat has suddenly got a bit more life to it and is quite interesting to listen to. Now that's great, but let's put some steps in. So so now we can hear how the filter is being 
triggered and, and envelope control. Let's go to our envelope, filter. So now, we've again got that very basic beat going on, but because I have a sequence here, the filter is being controlled by the envelopes. I can do the same with the amp as well. So. So that's just this basic beat, firing through the filter, firing through the distortion. I mean, if I take that off, okay, it's a really basic beat, but then, of course I can change the filter type. High pass. I like the low pass, but this, the distortions are nice as well. So this is type two, we go to the type three, lovely sound as well and of course this is all automatable including the decay and the, you know, the envelope so maybe and again if it, that's the beat and track there pretty much. <laughs> That'd work in some parts in Berlin, I think. So, as I've said, you know, the circuit mono station is a very powerful synthesizer, of course, um, and the sequencer is superb as well, really powerful sequencer. Um, but the other great thing that we've got, of course, is the fact that we can take audio through from any source that we have, feed that in through, uh, through the circuit, and of course, we can treat it like a filter, like you would a filter bank or any other sort of mono, uh, mono synth and passing audio through. But the fact that we've got sequenceable sections on there means, and automation, of course, as well, means that we've got a very powerful audio processor for pretty much anything as well. So I'm going to finish up now. And as I say, I wanted to thank you all, all you guys for, uh, for your time here, visiting us here at Audio Source in uh, Lausanne. Merci beaucoup. C'est très gentil. Um, and uh, yeah, um, this afternoon we're going to take a look at the Novation Peak as well. I should ask, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions about the Mono Station or even on the Facebook live stream if there are any questions that have arrived there. Um, but, um, you know, if you want to find more details, of course, you guys are here already at Audio Source. But of course, if you're online and watching and you want some more details and you're based out here in Switzerland, do uh, check out the audiosource.ch website. And I mean, come down and see the store as well, because I'm, I'm looking out over here and just seeing some incredible instruments dotted all over the place. So it's a nice place to come and spend a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> so um, anyway, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your time. And um, yeah, does anybody have any questions? We all good? No? Okay, cool. That's no problem. I've explained everything. Well, there we go. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, hopefully join us later on if you're in Facebook land as well. Join us later on. We'll have a good look at the peak synthesizer.